Hey there, VR gang. This is Brandon, your friendly internet postmaster. And in this video, I'll be going over how to install Luke Cross's real VR mod. First things first, you'll need to grab the newest version of the mod from Luke's Patreon. You can usually find this attached to the pinned Patreon post. It is also a good idea to double check this against the most recent Patreon post, as well as the latest game release post, to make sure it's not outdated. While you're here, it's always a good idea to look over the release post for the game mod you're installing. We'll start with Cyberpunk since it's the most popular. As you can see, a search gives us lots of posts because this mod has been around for quite a while and had lots of fixes due to game updates breaking the mod. In cases like this, some things may be outdated, but a game's release post is still worth looking over for the correct install folder to put the mod files, as well as any game settings you may need to change, and known issues. So now that I've located the original Cyberpunk release post, I'll look for a setup or install section in the post. This will give me the correct game folder for installing the mod files. The location of the main game folder on your system could be different depending on what game platform you own the game on, but once you get to the main game folder, the rest will be identical to the release post. Some games will have multiple EXE files, which is why it's important to know where the correct one is located. In most cases, the correct EXE file that launches the game, and not a launcher or something of that nature, will have a much larger file size. The next step is to drop all the files from the real folder directly into the game folder. You can unzip or extract the real file if you want to, but I just open it, highlight all the files, and drag them in manually. It is important that you have run the game flat at least once before installing the mod. That ensures that it has generated the user and settings files for the game on your system. The real mod will usually look for these files and possibly make some changes to the graphics or video settings. If it can't find those files, then it will assume that the game hasn't been run and won't install. With our Cyberpunk example here, it will look in Users, Your Username, App Data, Local, CD Projekt Red, Cyberpunk 2077. You can already see here that it has changed my original settings file, which is the one with ORI in the name, and created a new one that changes some settings and adds in custom resolutions for VR. Assuming you have followed all the previous steps and run the game flat, you should now be able to run the config file and it will install the mod. If you get an error saying this doesn't seem to be a supported game, make sure you're running the latest mod and game version and have the real files in the correct game folder. If you get an error saying it doesn't look like the game has been run, make sure you have run the game flat and the user graphics or settings file has been created for that game. Also make sure the account you're using on the PC has admin rights as the mod will need them to install and should ask when you run the config file. Now that we've covered all our bases, we can go ahead and double click on the config.bat file and the mod should install. It's also important to note that since this is not officially registered with Microsoft, you'll need to click on the More Info option of this screen in order to bring up the Run Anyway button. Now that the mod is installed, it should be ready to boot up in VR. Just make sure your headset is connected and you have the appropriate runtime selected in your headset software. For instance, you have MetaLink set as your default runtime and the Meta PC app if you are using a Quest 3, or Steam VR set as your OpenXR runtime if you're using a Steam VR based headset. Launch the game from your game library on your monitor and it should start up in VR. We'll do a few more games just to get the hang of things. We have the latest version of the mod already, so the first step would now be to go back to the Patreon page and read over the next game's release post. We'll pick Hogwarts, as that is another popular one. According to the game's release post, the correct folder path will be Hogwarts Legacy, Phoenix, Binaries, Win64. Same thing as last time. So first, make sure you have run the game flat at least once to generate the user settings and graphics files and then drag all the files from the real folder into this game folder. Run the config file, and it should install the mod successfully. Since I already have the real mod installed, it will ask me if I want to replace those files. If you're updating to a newer version of real, this is exactly how you would do that. Just drag the new files in, choose replace, and run the config file to update to the new version you just dropped in the game folder. 
When the install process finds previous settings, it will ask if you want to keep or delete them. This only refers to and affects the settings in the real overlay. If there is nothing new added to the game, feel free to keep the settings you have. If Luke has added some new behavior or updated the game in some way, it is probably best to delete those settings and start from the base settings that the config file will set. Next up we'll go with something from the Ubisoft catalog, as there are a number of these that Luke has modded now. How about Far Cry 6? Step 1, go back and check the game's release post for the correct install path. In this case, there are two options. If you have an Ubisoft Plus account and are playing the game through that route, you'll need to install into the Bin Plus folder. If you bought the game from Ubisoft or Steam, you'll install into the Bin folder. I have this one on Steam, so we'll go ahead and dig through my Steam folder. You know the drill now. Make sure you've run the game flat, drag all the real files in, and run the config file. Alright, we've installed the mod for three games. As long as you follow this process, you'll be a real pro installer in no time at all. If you have any issues, please post on the Patreon page under one of the more recent Patreon posts by Luke. Please include details so we know what you're having problems with exactly. If the mod installs correctly, but you have other issues, please also put a copy of your real VR 64.log file on pastebin.com and include a link to it in your post. The log file can be found in the same game folder that you install the mod in. Now it's time for you to venture off and enjoy some amazing and immersive VR worlds. Until next time, praise the fun!